Well, hello, Chicago sports fans. Welcome into Monsters of the Madhouse, Chicago sports podcast. Thank you so much for watching tonight because we got a special show for you on this Monday night. We are talking all Bears free agency. The legal tampering has opened up noon or I guess 11 o'clock central time earlier today, noon Eastern time. So there was a lot that's gone on. I mean, the Bears signed, they signed Christian Wilkins. They signed uh, Xavier McKinney. No, they didn't sign any of these players, but they did send a couple of players. So we'll get, we'll, we'll, get, we'll, we'll get in there here in just a second, but I want to introduce you guys to our cast. First off, Brandon Duplacy. What's up, Brandon? I was just talking to you a second ago, man. It's good to have you on tonight. Appreciate it, man. How you doing? We're good, man. We're good. Also back, we got Michael. Michael, welcome back to the show, man. Got a chance to work with you for the first time last week. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Doing good. I just took like a 20 minute power nap, so I'm I'm ready. <laughs> you know what's funny, man? I, I don't know about you guys, but this this time change. Usually, I'm kind of exhausted by this time of the night, and I'm like falling asleep. But I'm like wide awake. I don't know what. Maybe it's because like it's been light out for another hour and a half, and I feel like I got more energy because of that. But it's yeah. just so weird with free agency. Yeah. Well, yeah, the free agency too. We're all like pumped up and like looking at our phones of everything going on. Uh, Eric Rogers, man, I think this is the first time I've had you on a show before. I don't think I've done a show with you before, man. What's no, up? yeah, this is my first time. Well, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, so. glad to have you guys on, man. Excited to talk football with you guys because I know there's something that we all have in common here. We're all big football fans, and you come to the right place. Uh, make sure you guys follow us on our YouTube channel. I was watching yesterday when. Uh, Brandon and the crew was talking to Curtis Conway. I was watching on our YouTube page. So if you haven't yet, like and subscribe to that. Chicago Sports Podcast on our Facebook page, on Twitter. So there's many different ways you guys can watch us. When you go to the YouTube channel as well, you can go there and watch some of our past shows and check everything out that's going on. All right, guys. So here we go. We talk about it. Legal tampering has opened up. The Bears, quiet start to free agency. Well, they did a couple of – they made a couple of moves. And we could dig into that even before we dive into everything else that's gone around the NFL today and anything that we think that could have happened, maybe that didn't happen. But we start with the signing of Kevin Byrd. That was the first one. That was the first name that kind of got through. That was a name that we learned about – well, I learned about this morning when I first woke up. And I think a, a good player – a guy that was on two different – he was on the Titans forever. He was a stud on the Titans a couple of years ago, especially a couple of years. That Super Bowl – or not the Super Bowl run, but the run I thought when they were going to the Super Bowl, when Tannehill had that horrible game and they lost to the Bengals, their defense was balling that year. And uh, he was a lot because of that. And um, – oh, here we go. Um, it was, I thought he was a big reason because of that. Got traded to Philadelphia last year. Kind of had a down year, but th then again, when you're playing for the Eagles and Matt Patricia, and I don't know what the heck they were doing on defense. I think anybody could have won in there uh, and tried to do that. <laughs> but um, so I think it's a good replacement for Eddie Jackson. I think he is a physical. I think he's a more physical player than Eddie Jackson, and it is a cost effective. Uh, it's cost effective as well. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, especially on that physical part. I mean, the main difference between the two is kind of their ability to tackle. I mean, I think it, you, someone posted it. Like, they posted their, like, missed tackle percentage. Eddie Jackson was, like, 14%. Kevin Byard's, like, 6%. So, like, I know all I know. I got a lot of, like, pissed off maybe at Eddie Jackson because so many times you'd see him try and wrap up a guy and he just miss or he just wouldn't really – it almost looked like he wasn't trying. That's not going to happen with Kevin Byard. He did take a step back with the coverage, I think, a little bit. His interception and pass breakups were down, but definitely a chance to bounce back. And secondary can be infectious. That Eagles secondary was kind of a disaster toward the back end of last year. I think with a more sound secondary like the Bears built and kind of performed at the end of last year, it'll really help him try and bounce back in that category. Um, I definitely, I definitely like it. It's definitely a good signing. Um, I think it is a, it is an upgrade from Eddie Jackson. Um, everyone talks about the tackling, and I tell I I'm a huge um discrepancy guy. It's a, it's different when who you're down there trying to make tackles in the box versus making open field tackles. They lumped all those tackles together. Eddie Jackson is a good in the box tackler, open field tackler, not so much, and that's goes for ninety percent of the safeties in the league. You don't see too many open field tacklers like like like. Uh, Cam Chancellor and guys like that. They were great open field tacklers. Um, a lot of Eddie Jackson's missed tackles were open field. Um, obviously, this is a guy that can he can make tackles in the open field. Um, we probably won't see him down the box a whole bunch, which I'm actually okay with because I think we're going to be able to handle it up front with the way our linebackers played. Um, he, I think he is an upgrade coverage-wise from Eddie Jackson. Um, I think that he is a better side-to-side side-to-side player. 
Um, I, and I think uh, we're going to have a less complicated scheme than what the Eagles had. So that definitely is going to play in his favor, um, having a less complicated scheme to play with. And uh, with the way our D, with way our D, uh, DBs played and our back seven, I think he's going to have a lot of weight off his shoulders where he's not the go-to guy to maybe make plays as much um, without with having such studs back there with him. So definitely an upgrade for us. You know, guys, I thought the free agency market was, was really interesting when it came comes to that position because now I'm interested to see what happens with Eddie Jackson. I, I thought one of the better ones was Xavier McKinney that got signed by the Packers. We'll get into that too because that was that was my number one target. Uh, that was a guy that I was looking for in free agency. But I wonder what that price is going to look like now with Eddie Jackson. We and Michael and Eric, you guys just did a very good job explaining kind of the play and the upgrade that we could see with Kevin now going into that position. And it'll be very interesting to see what Eddie Jackson's number is going to be because I mean, this signing it's, it's a two year contract, $15 million. So you're saving a lot more money compared to the last contracts. I wonder if it's that position in general that now you kind of go to the second tier and what, what, what is it going to be out there when, when he, when he hits, when, yeah. when the, maybe a second or third day signing. Mm-hmm. Um, I do. Th- I, I, I don't, I won't put it out there and say it's going to happen. I think he may end up circling back into our pocket if we don't get another safety in the draft. Um, cause he's not going to get the money he's expecting, especially with Julian Blackman and Jordan Fuller and Jordan Whitehead and CJ Gardner Johnson, all still not having signed contracts who are all looked at, you know, much higher, come on, much higher commanded safeties than he, than he is. Um, with with a market that's still very very wide open in free agency for that position, I don't think he'll command the money that he that he wants when knowing that guys like that are out there. So I think this may be a full circle thing for him, and we might be able to come back and get him for cheap, and he might have to take it or he might sign someplace else for really cheap. So yeah, I mean, I think it's just simple supply and demand, right? There's a lot of safeties out there right now. There's a lot of teams that need safeties, but when you have a high supply, you're not gonna if you're the safeties, you're not going to get that price you're wanting to because they can just probably go get another guy, maybe a little bit worse, but they're like similar range that they're not going to pay you the top dollar. I mean, what Bayard was seven and a half mil. There was a safety earlier. That was, I think literally the exact same deal was two year, 15 mil. So they're kind of probably going to be all around that similar range is what I would guess. A lot of two year deals for these guys are not super young, but they still got some years left on them, some wear and tear. But yeah. around that two year, seven to maybe eight mil is probably where a lot of these guys are going to fall. Yeah. Um, a couple standouts in that category. I mean, we got, uh, obviously, we got Antoine Winfield Jr. signed for 17 mil. Um, Xavier McKenney, four years, 68 mil. Um, Geno Stone is the one he was referring to, the other guy, about two years, 15 mil. Um, Denver, true. surprisingly, paying Brandon Jones three years, 20 mil, which was, I mean, a shocker to me. I don't know. I, feel that maybe I was, was shocked little, by that one too I think that was a little too much to pay for him mm-hmm. a little too steep a price to pay for a guy like that um Taylor Rep resigning or sorry Taylor Rep resigning with the uh with the Bills for 10 for three years um 10.6 which that's a steal for three years out of, out of that out of that young man too so I mean there's a couple things in this market that don't make sense a lot of things that do make sense it's just that I don't see him falling tipping tipping anybody scale enough to demand the type of money he's asking for you know what's interesting, and we're going to get into this a little bit later, guys, is uh, some of the players that didn't sign on the first day. Fuller was actually one of them that I was a little bit s- s- surprised about. Yeah. I thought for sure he was going to be one of the other ones that was going to be gone today. But it'll be interesting to see what happens now tomorrow. And, th- and there's going to be more signings here in the overnight. And, you know, when we all wake up in the morning, we're going to be looking at our phones. and be like, oh, okay, there's there, this team's going to sign this person because this is going to be going nonstop for the next couple of days. And this is why we love following along with free agency because this is the fun of it, guys. And uh, thank you all so much for watching on the Chicago Sports Podcast here on our YouTube page, YouTube channel. Like and subscribe to that. Uh, talking free agency, guys. So let's talk about DeAndre Swift. That was the big one that we signed earlier today, three years, $24 million. I've always been a fan of his. I always liked him with the Lions. I always thought he was a hard runner. thought he had a really good year with the Eagles last year, ran over for 1,000 yards. And what I like about him, too, is he's a good pass He's a good pass catcher, too, out of the backfield with all those weapons that they had, too, with, 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 with the Eagles. But, I mean, you, I, listen, they say the tampering period opens up at, at noon today. I think we all clearly saw what the Eagles were going. I think there's a reason why we saw Swift left, and we saw re- why they why he left when Barkley went there yeah. uh, a couple hours later, which is an upgrade. It is. I, I mean, Barkley <laughs> – 
to me was one of the best, was the best one on, on, out there. But with that being said, I like that Swift is with us right now. I think for a cost effective, a cost effective signing, and uh, you can. I, I feel like with this too, this is a good pick because let's face it, we all know we're going towards a rookie quarterback. Well, we think we're going towards a rookie quarterback in, in the draft. And if we have the rookie quarterback starting, we're going to really rely on that run game. So you can have Swift back there and you can have the rest of our backs along with them. And that could really help out with our rookie quarterback. And I just thought overall that this was a smart move. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, good. No, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. All right, I'll, I'll just start. I mean, I think I was a little hesitant right away because, I mean, I think most of us, we went to bed hearing it was going to be Jacobs, but mainly Barkley was the big name, right? They, he was linked to the Bears a lot last night. I think he was the betting favorite late last night, so we all kind of had that. Maybe they do make the big splash, go after the big ticket, and then we kind of get 30 seconds in, and it's like, all right, it's DeAndre Swift. And we're like, whoa. That's not exactly who we were expecting right off the bat. But I think after seeing Jacobs and Barkley's deal, I mean, Jacobs gets $12 million, which I thought was really high for Jacobs. And then Barkley was at 12 and a half. I thought that was maybe a little higher, but about – I thought he was going to get about 12, so not much of an overpay there. But that's about that area where I'm like, I'm not sure 12 mil for running back is what the Bears need. They got holes elsewhere. They still need linemen both sides of the ball and they still probably need to go get a receiver they just need to get other positions so once those deals got announced i felt a lot better about the eight mil for swift i think um yeah definitely definitely uh swift is one of the better cast patching cast pass pass catching uh running backs in the in the uh, nfl which i mean if we see every team now if you want to win the super bowl you got to have one um i mean you see i mean look at the chiefs the bills i mean all the teams that went deep go to make deep playoff runs they have them you know, right? So especially with us having a young quarterback, it's not only about the running game. You want to get the ball out quick. The quickest, the quickest person you can get the ball to is the running back in 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 in, in the pass game. I mean, we look at the four we're hoping few and far between. Obviously, Christian McCaffrey is a league above everybody else. And I mean a league above everybody else when it comes to that category, because he actually lines up out there as a receiver. But I mean Swift has that Swift has decent enough hands to make people worry about him as a pass catcher. That's going to open things up for a passing game for a quarterback. That also helps keep defensive ends off our off quarterback too, knowing that they have to peel with the pass catching running back and then be in the screen game. Um, so if you are looking to go towards a rookie quarterback, getting a running back for that cheap, that's able to do tons of different things. He is a pretty decent blocker for the size that he is too. Um, and that's, uh, that's actually, that's actually, it, it's a steal. I like, I like it compared to what we would have paid for Barkley that probably would have tanked us a little bit on trying to find some help in a couple other places. I think with this move, it allows us to make it, it's, it's, it's a decent enough move and a good enough move that you made a upgrade and you still be able to move forward in the process of maturing, maturing this offense. You know, I was kind of looking back at this last year too with Swift and how he left the Lions. I mean, we all, we, a lot of us, us Bears fans, we all remember him with, with the Lions. And I kind of looked into a little bit deeper. I'm like, you know, I don't think they really wanted to trade. Now, they just had Jameer Gibbs fall to them in, in the draft last yeah. year. And that was a hell of a pick because that guy's a dynamic player. And I, I get why they took him. Um, and I think that was really, that's what freed up trading uh, Swift. To, to the Eagles, but I had overall everything I was reading back and I was going back and looking at some past articles and stuff out of Detroit. I was like, I don't think they really wanted to trade him and they liked him the way he worked in his offense. So I think overall, this is a win-win for us. And it's going to be interesting to see now where we go next, because now we got the four other signings we're going to talk about. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We got two. You should have four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, so this leads me into this guys, because I, when we started talking about, uh, at least on my show, normally we have our my shows on Wednesday nights here on Monsters of the Madhouse. We've been talking about free agency for the past couple of weeks, and the number one position I targeted was center. I was like, this is the, the position that I think the Bears really need an upgrade on. I still think they need an upgrade on. And then I saw <laughs> Mitch Morris get released by the Bills, yep. and then I see that uh, that um, Cushenberry signed with the Titans, but he, got, he was out, and he was the, probably the number one center out there. And yeah. I was like, man, one of these guys would make perfect sense to fill that void, but are they going to pay the money? Do you think they were asking a little too much? So do you, in my mind, I, I think one of these linemen, now guys, this is day one of free agency. So we still got a couple more days of this. There, there's, yeah, there's, place. there's no overreaction here. We're just kind of looking about what happened on day one. But at the same time, I'm like, I wonder if it's going to come back here, maybe not going after one of these, a center or, heck, some of these cards are some big money today. 
that's yeah. a position that I don't think that we needed that as much as we did as a center. Yeah. Um, I do think that it may come back and bite us because, I mean, everybody – I mean, me personally, I don't think – I mean, I think we can get a I think we can get a rookie center as long as we have veteran tackles. I mean, that's kind of how way it works. You get a rookie center, you got to have veteran tackles. Vice versa, you have a veteran center. You, if you have rookie tackles, you got to have veteran guards, and it just kind of flip flops because you can't you can't have rookies on at, to, at two main positions on the line. Um, so that's the hurtful part, knowing that we that could that we let Cush, we let Cushenberry go, knowing that like that guy was there. We should have we should have got him if we knew like. We're gonna have to either take a tackle or a center in the free agency. If we don't get one or the other, we got to we got to go to the draft for it, or hopefully trade for one. Um, in my personal feeling, I think um, the best center on the board right now would probably be Evan Brown. Um, Evan Brown's still out there. I think we can get him for, for very little money. Um, he's got a vet, vet, veteran guy, um, can command an offense, very vocal. Um, so I think he 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 is a good he is a good place to put on the line. But I think if we get him, I think we do still go get a rookie center as well. Yeah, I, I like that point you bring up about how like you can't have too many rookies or too many veterans on the O lines. Kind of got to be split up. And with the Bears, they have the two young tackles. And they have Jenkins too at guard, but that probably leaves two veterans still to fill those other two. I really like that point. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah, so just looking at, like, the free agency that's still out there, I mean, Cushenberry was by far the best one. He went to the Titans early in the day, I believe, which kind of sucked. That's kind of one that you look at and say that would have been really nice to get because a rotation of your interior linemen of Jenkins, Davis, and then you have uh, – what's his name? They just traded for him. It's escaping me from the Bills. For the Bills? Yeah, Bates, right? Bates. Bates. Yeah, Ryan Bates. Yep, Ryan Bates. yeah, Bates. That would have been a, a great rotational guard because <laughs> either Davis or Bates would be great depth while you have Cushionberry at center. That sadly did not happen with them signing Cushionberry, but I still think they're gonna go get one because I, like Eric said, it's really hard to believe they'll go pick a rookie to go try and fill that void. Yeah, and I think that would be a tough void to fill, and just just for our center play over the past couple of years. In general, I, that's why I think that, that, that getting um, a, a veteran presence on on the line with the center, I thought would be <laughs> for for this team. And it, obviously, it could still happen. There still could be trades made. And I know this is a very good draft for off everything that I keep reading. This is a very good draft for offensive linemen. Mm-hmm. So um, it'll it'll be it'll be interesting to see what direction they go. And it looks like a lot of other teams are kind of figuring that out too when it comes to offensive linemen from d- different beat writers that I've that I've read about today. Hey, thank you guys for watching here, the Chicago Sports Podcast, Monsters of the Madhouse. We appreciate you all so much here. We're talking free agency. We're talking football. Legal tampering opened up earlier today. We got Michael and Eric to discuss everything going on right now. Uh, you guys can follow us on our YouTube channel. You can like and subscribe right there. Watch some of our past shows. Heck, you can watch the show from yesterday with Curtis Conway. I know the guys talked to him. Uh, on our show last week, we talked to Bernard Berrien, who was so much fun to talk with and uh, get his perspective about wide receivers and in the combine and everything that he was looking forward to. So you guys can check that out also on our Facebook page uh, as well. I also want to thank uh, Underdog Fantasy. You guys can check out Underdog Fantasy, Chicago sports podcast users. You'll receive a 100% deposit match up to $100 when you use the CSP sign-in code. Check that out at underdogfantasy.com. Perfect timing, guys, as next week, the tournament, the – basketball tournament next week for i cannot wait some of my favorite time of the year this part one of my favorite months of the year is going on right now as we're talking free agency we got the conference tournament games this weekend and then the start of the tournament next week and then opening day I, I don't know about you guys man but i'm i'm like pumped for everything going on right now because it's such an Good exciting month, time it, it, it's so much fun but we're talking free agency here guys so when we look at the bears and we're gonna stay on the bears here for a little bit and then we're gonna go around the uh uh, NFC North, because I thought there were some interesting moves with some of the teams in the North, including a team that doesn't have a quarterback anymore. And um, is there any – so I kind of look at this. We uh, Center was a position I I kind of went at saying I, I thought that was number one. But what Michael, Eric, Brandon, when you guys look around, is there, there's still a lot of really good, really good players on the board here in, in free agency. <laughs> the defensive line would be uh, another another area that I think they can improve on. I, I – I mean, Daniel Hunter is still out there. How much is he going to cost? I thought, I honestly thought he was going to be gone day one, but um, maybe his market has gone down just a little bit. Because he had an, he, you know, when I think about Hunter, he had an excellent year last year. He was great yeah. last year, 
But the year before that, he, I know he was hurt, but it, it wasn't one of his better years. So I think maybe teams are looking at that a little bit. I don't know. I feel like it's almost the Cody Bellinger effect with the Chicago Cubs. I don't think I don't think the Bears are going to make any splash signings. I expect them to make a bargain signing at free safety. Um, the Bears, uh, Brad Biggs did report that the Bears' biggest priority in free agency was the defensive line. I thought you might see maybe a run at a Bryce Huff or – I still think they might go with like a Chase Young on a one-year deal, a prove-it deal. I don't think they're going to pay anybody $20 million plus like a Daniil Hunter. I think that's what it'll request. And I think the Bears, if, if they do th- do what I expect them to do, draft a rookie QB, I think they're looking at a two-year plan. I don't think they intend on going all in on this year. So I think you'll see more free agent signings in the next offseason. And – Again, I, I really don't think I, the running back thing surprised me. I know they want to value it as, as a receiving back. I think that's why they signed uh, DeAndre Swift. But I didn't expect the Bears to make even that signing. It's a little costly, I think, if you ask me. But I, I don't believe they're going to make. I don't. I let a lot of people want to see Hunter end up on the Bears. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I, I, I mean, I, obviously, I there's great, great talent at the rush position. I mean, JV and Clowney's still there. Chase Young's there. Josh, uh, Josh Uche's there. Um, Kyle Van Noy's there. But these are all older guys. We don't see too many younger guys out there. The defensive end position in for agency. So it really depends on, you know, it's going to come down to. I mean, obviously, everybody thinks that if we are, if we are going to, if we are going to trade. Um, one of our picks or something like that, we might end up with a trade for 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 a defensive end um, that's that's looking to be traded possibly. But there is a lot of good talent on the defensive end for agency side. I just think a lot of them cost a lot of money. I mean, Javion Clowney obviously probably being the best one left right now. I mean, I don't think you could get him for under for under fifteen. Um, and even then, even fifteen is too steep for him. I'm sorry, he's he's a little he's a little on the, he's on the older side. He's on his downside. Still had a great season. Don't get me wrong. Great year last year. He got robbed. Okay. I mean, he had, he, I mean, I think, I think he could still do great things. We all know Jamie Klein can still, still do great things. Um, I just don't think that unless we can get somebody, I mean, Chase Young, like I heard that the one year deal, one and one, one prove it. I also don't, I also, I mean, take him great. I also would rather have one of the two rookies. I think it was the two rookies that are coming in, the one from Penn State and the one from Florida State are also better than Chase Young. Um, so I think that that would be a better way to go. Um, I, I would know the entire world wanted to see us sign Chris Jones. I know that that was hurtful. That was really hurtful <laughs> to the entire Bears. <laughs> Bears hurtful? No, not a stuff kind of like that. that. Trigger immediately as soon as we had the chance. Um, I kind, of, I kind of think Kansas City was just hanging, dangling out there like a carrot, saying, "Hey, how we're gonna be, you guys thought you guys were going to sign them, but it's not going to happen." <laughs> um, I mean, I there is there is some good guys out there. I mean, Clayus Campbell's out there again, older guy. At the end of it, at the end, I mean, got three years left. I mean, some of these guys, if you can kind of build, hopefully get one, maybe two years out of them, get some between 12, 12 million or less, and call call it a day. I think maybe you sign a guy like Clayus Campbell, Javi Damian Clown, Javi Clowney, Cal Van Noy. Um, Guys like that. I think you kind of got to ask too. What are the Bears' expectations for next season? Um, <laughs> if if they're intending on bringing Justin Fields back, it would make a lot of sense to to go all in now to to sign somebody to a big deal like a Daniel Hunter. But again, if you're going to draft a rookie QB, I don't I don't think their aspirations are Super Bowl next year. I think they just want to progress, get better than they were the year before. I, I think if if they draft a Caleb Williams and they finish with, let's say, even 9 to 11 wins, I think they'll be happy. So I, playoffs, maybe. I really still don't – I don't think that would be Ryan Pohl's goal if he drafts a rookie yeah, a rookie be. QB. So yeah. I don't see him going all in this, this offseason in free agency. I didn't expect him to before this free agency started, and yeah. it hasn't surprised me yet that he hasn't made a splash signing. I did expect a bargain signing at, at, at free safety. I think he got – a better player than I expected him to. I, I did like McKinney a lot, and that one hurt. But uh, I don't. I don't think you're going to see any splash signings from the Bears. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I think probably the one that I would have been most excited about would have been Wilkins because I think there's a lot of different ways you can go on the edge. I mean, the draft class is very strong on edge, especially where the Bears would be able to pick at nine or even trade back <laughs> to the teams. That edge is a lot stronger than the interior D-line where the Bears still need help. But after seeing what Wilkins got, I think it was almost $28 million. That's That's yeah. crazy. I'm not sure I'd have been happy with that because they still need to fill other positions. They're not a D-tackle away. That probably would have sucked up too much cap. I mean, watching him and Max Crosby will be fun in Vegas, but I don't think that's a, bear, 
a move the Bears really could have made with kind of how it, their roster is constructed. And I think we've just seen from Ryan Poles now. I mean, again, we are only less than 24 hours in the tampering period. Things can truly change. But looking at last year, he didn't make too many big splashes. When he saw a guy he was could get, he made a – I guess you could call it a splash on Tremaine Edmonds. That was a bigger deal. <laughs> but he doesn't – kind of go in on the big ticket guys he stays to his price and he just kind of fills the holes with guys he believes are fit for the right money and i think that's not a bad strategy so far and they still have cap to move if he decides one of these guys are worth it but i i'm kind of with brandon here i don't expect them to kind of make an all-in move a big splash like a hunter kind of just stay low to the budget and make sure to have at least some space left but if they see the opportunity he's going to get it <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I agree with that. I kind of kind of agree with that. I mean, like I was reading in the comments, the Bears just had their the aspirations are playoffs, and if you're going to whether you go with a rookie rookie QB or you stay with Justin Fields, everybody knows what you're going to do is you're going to load 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 your defense load your defense right now, knowing that most of your offense is going to be really young. Um, you can't, I mean, because we already missed a chance to make splashes offensively with Mike Evans being gone. Um, there, we know the trade with Justin Jefferson is not going to happen, even though everyone thinks that that's still a thing. I, it's not going to happen. I don't, I don't care what anybody says. It will never happen. Um, and if they do, then great, but it won't happen. Um, you know, so with Barkley gone, I mean, most of the top offensive talents are gone already. You know, they've already re-signed or franchise tagged. So I think that if you're going to make – I think if you're, whether you're going to go with a rookie quarterback or you're going to stay with Justin Fields, I think you know you have to back him up with a defense. If you know you're going to – offense is young and everything that we hope the offense is going to be might isn't there yet, you got to have a good defense to back it. I mean, we've seen with, with, with every young team that's been able to make the playoffs, their defense has brought them along. So I think – if you're gonna if you're gonna make the splash, it's got to be on the defensive side of the ball, um, and you, it might not be Daniel Hunter. Um, I mean, let's see. I mean, we're we're talking about that. Um, I just, I mean, Pat, Patrick Patrick Queens. I know we still have two good linebackers, but Patrick Queens, a hell of a linebacker. We saw what he did last year. Goddamn. I mean, not. I mean, Bobby Wagner's there. Um, there's there's some still some good linebackers on the board that can help move this defense around. We don't know exactly what the type of defense is we're going to be playing up front. We know that the backs. We're hoping the back seven can carry us, but they're hoping up, up front can hold their own. So there's different ways depending on what type of defense we we actually want to play. Yeah, and you guys all brought up some really good points, and especially some of these players left. I, I saw that list earlier today where I saw Queen and Wagner, and I saw the different areas that some of the teams that they could be linked to. Uh, you brought up Eric Javani and Kalani, who had a resurgence year for the for the Ravens last year. But you're right; some of these players are a little bit older right now, and you don't know exactly. <laughs> So that's what I'm saying. After the stars tier players come out of the first out of out of the first day, it's gonna be interesting to see how everything else falls in place now. And it'll be fun to watch. Thank you guys for watching here to us tonight, the Chicago Sports Podcast, Monsters of the Madhouse. You can like and subscribe on our YouTube page. Check that out and on our Facebook page and on Twitter. So there's many different gateways you guys can watch us. And uh, also wanna say uh, uh, El Bandito Yankee. You know, it's Monday night, but you're always looking forward to the weekend. You're looking forward. Hey, just the middle of the week, you want to come home from work. You want to just sit back, relax for a few minutes. There, take a shot of this. Chris Chelios, revolutionary Albandu Dito Yankee. It is smooth core, additive free, 100% blue agave, ultra premium tequila. And you guys could check that more and read about more at albanditoyankee.com. Thank you guys for watching us tonight. Got Michael, Eric, and Brandon with us as we're talking free agency. The tampering opened up earlier today. Before we get to the AFC North, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about a potential new stadium for the Bears that we got some big news this morning. Looks like they might be staying in Chicago. Justin Fields, we've talked about it here a lot, and I've tried to ignore <coughs> to talk about Justin Fields in the last couple of weeks. Um, but – it's a very interesting time now because we've seen now that the tampering period is open and now we've seen the domino effect of some of these quarterbacks. No surprise, we saw Kirk Cousins go to the Falcons earlier today. And then you see some of these other teams. All right, well, maybe the Steelers. Nope, nope, nope. They went out and got Russell Wilson. And then the Raiders get Gardner Minshew. They sign him. And I still think the Raiders are probably going to – I think they're the wild card in this if Justin Fields does end up getting traded. And I do. I still think Justin Fields is going to get traded somewhere. I don't know where. Uh, maybe – Ryan maybe regrets a little bit saying he wanted to do it before free agency, but you have to see how the market plays out. Sometimes you got to see what, how things lie in place. <clears throat> it's going to be very interesting to see where he lands. I still think possibility of the Raiders, unless they want to go and draft a quarterback or they could still go draft a quarterback. But I think that would be the best fit for him. If he wants to potentially go and try to start somewhere, 
But Justin Fields still on the Bears. Will he still be on the Bears, or will he be somewhere else? Um, I t- technically think he. I, I pretty much think he, he, whether they go with another quarterback or not, he's going to end up being a Bear, um, just because um, we've seen the quarterback market shoot so fast. Um, and at that and at this point, all those guys that all those guys that just got picked up or starters they're all looked at it possibly being starters um and most teams aren't if you already have one starter you're not looking to try and trade for another one have a qb and have a qb battle especially the raiders that already have a a, a three three qb depth um with possibly maybe drafting another one um i do see the possibility of justin staying is more likely now because the market for him is so much smaller. And I think a lot of teams are like, well, you're asking too much for Justin in that pick. So either hammer it down or we're not, or we don't want it. So now it kind of can play the game and say, Hey, if you guys want Justin, anybody want Justin, we'll give him for this, we're this round pick or this round that. And I don't think polls is ready to just give him up for, 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 you know, anything, anything less than, you know, sec a couple second and third round picks. Um, the, to me, I think we end up trading. We still trade with Washington, or possibly trade with um, the Chargers or the Cardinals, which are all prop, which are all probably the best best teams to trade with at this point. Now that Gardner Minshew end up going with the Raiders, I I think Justin Fields is absolutely getting traded, and I say that because I don't see if you retain Justin Fields this season. What value does he hold after this year? Especially if you draft a rookie quarterback to start for you and Fields just sits on your bench. Is he more tradable the following season? And I believe it's before May 2nd is when you'd have to give him the fifth-year option for $26 million, which would make for a single season Fields one of the highest-paid quarterbacks in the NFL. I don't think Brian Poles is willing to commit to that. And if you can't give him the extension – I don't think Fields would be too happy to be here anymore. But also, if you're going to draft a guy like Caleb and you're going to leave Fields in in, in your locker room, I, I think Caleb's constantly going to consider the fact that Fields could take the job from him and he's going to be worried to struggle. And I think the most important thing for a rookie quarterback is to struggle. I think the most important thing for a rookie quarterback is to know that he can make mistakes because if you're not willing to fail, you'll never succeed. Uh, yeah, so when you're looking at Fields' trade market, I think how the QB carousel played out is the absolute worst-case scenario for Ryan Poles. I mean, if you're looking at – because I think right away, when if you started looking at teams at the beginning of the year, it was Pittsburgh and Atlanta. Those are teams that probably were desperate for a quarterback. They really needed an upgrade, and they went and got the veteran option. I mean, the Steelers are paying Russell Wilson like a million dollars. I mean, they're paying him pennies on the dollar. And Atlanta went with a 35-year-old quarterback coming off an Achilles tear for four years, almost $50 million, instead of trying to go after Fields. And I feel like just once I saw Cousins go to Atlanta, that really dried up the market. I mean, the best case would have been if he went back to Minnesota, Atlanta probably would have had almost no other option. I mean, they could have traded up. They maybe wait, try and get McCarthy or Daniels if one of those guys were to fall in the draft but when you're looking at the market it's about as bone dry as it can get i don't think vegas makes a whole lot of sense i mean there was that rumor earlier around two o'clock a bunch of people all at once said there's a lot of steam with this a lot of steam with this and then an hour later report says they're not taking any calls and it's like what the hell is going on at this point like it's a little confusing i don't think anyone really knows but it's a really Baron Markin, if Pohl has truly waited to see the carousel to see what value he can get for him, he lost. He lost that gamble trying to get max value from him. Yeah, it was it was it was it was too late. If he wanted to do it, he should have done it early when everybody was willing to willing to throw in on it. Um and everybody before we knew what was happening with Russell and what was happening with all these players. Um I still those teams, the teams that I do think that still make sense that have a possibility. Um, obviously, I think the Chargers still have a possibility because nobody knows what Justin Herbert's situation is because he, after all, he did hurt his throwing hand. We don't know what it's going to be like when he gets back. And we, we know that um, one boy from Michigan wanted both, tried to recruit both of them. He was high. That was his. He was upset that he didn't get Justin Fields. He was upset he didn't get Justin Herbert. Uh, either he or they were in college. So, I mean, and the Chargers are searching for a backup. So maybe that might be their way of being like, hey, 
If you guys want us, you guys want our pick and Justin Fields, you trade us your fifth pick in this. Who knows? Highly doubt it. Um, other than that, the market gets very slim after that. I mean, maybe being a Seahawks backup, don't know what that would accomplish. You can't really trade for anybody. Maybe, maybe go get Tyler Lockett, maybe go get um something like that. I mean, so we but we gotta get value. I think polls won't trade him without significant value that's gonna help us in a spot that we need. Um Fields is not he's not gonna trade him for for dra- for just one draft pick or multiple draft picks. I think he's gonna ask for a player and I don't think any, he's worth most of the players that polls thinks he is, which to me doesn't hurt my feelings. I'm I'm okay with keeping Justin. I'm also okay if we if we draft if we draft another quarterback. Um I just don't think you can get he can trade Justin without getting another player back for him, a player that's going to help us somewhere. So I, I think the domino of the quarterbacks has just been so interesting to me. Just it started with Mac Jones being traded for a six round pick. And I think that kind of started. I mean, listen, uh, Justin Fields, is, I think, has been better. And you watched the tape that I think he's been better than Mac Jones, period. But that first round class, but Mac Jones was a 15th pick in the first round, that same class with Justin Fields. So going for just a six round pick where they were literally just trying to get rid of him, I think that kind of started it right there and it kind of trickled down everything else. So I'm like, man, now I don't I don't know if these teams want to give up a third or maybe a fourth round pick for Justin Fields. I sounds like they don't. So to, to what you were saying, Eric, to what you're saying, Michael, too, it, it, it's it comes down to what the value is for him, what Ryan pulls values for Justin Fields and what will he do for him? I, I don't know. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how this one plays out. Anything could happen here. Anything could happen <laughs> in the next couple of days. Yeah. It, we, we just don't know. So um, I just thought some of these quarterbacks, like the Minshew signing, I thought Minshew actually played very well for the Colts last year for, for what he did to come in there for a team that really wasn't supposed to be very good. Um, he goes in and now he goes to, to, to Vegas. It, um, it, it just – the quarterback market in general just had me puzzled a little bit, but that's why I love this time of the year, guys. So uh, free agency talk here at Monsters of the Madhouse. Thank you guys for watching. Eric, Dan, Pinky, we see you all. Cheryl and Trax, the creator of Monsters of the Madhouse. Thanks to everybody watching tonight. As we take a look at free agency, the legal tampering period, and the NFC North in general, guys. So we go from the Bears to the NFC North. And I thought there were some interesting moves in general. Obviously, the biggest one's Kirk Cousins leaving the division. He's going to the Falcons. Yeah. I, I like Kirk Cousins. I, I I don't hate Kirk Cousins. I, I think he's actually better than what he is. I thought, <laughs> I thought he played very well last year. He's going to a team in Atlanta now that's got a ton of weapons, and he's got one of the probably one of the best backs in the league. Um, now, he had one of the best receivers in the league uh, with Jefferson, but he's going to have a lot of weapons there in Atlanta and a great defense. So it'll be interesting to see. And he played for Morris. Morris was his co- was, was a coach for Washington mm-hmm. his first three years. So he's very familiar familiar with Morris and the entire coaching staff down there. So I think that was a good fit. I don't know what the hell Minnesota is going to do after this. I just saw from Diane Rossini a second ago here that they might be linked to Aaron Jones, uh, who just got uh, who the Packers just released earlier today. So yep. uh, it'd be interesting for that. They did go pick up a couple of defensive players, the Vikings. Um, Jonathan Grenard, I can never say his name correctly. I know he's on the Texans because he was oh awesome. Every time, I, every time I watched him last year, he was freaking making plays. Uh, they also went and got Van Gingle from Miami, who was with Flores, who's a defensive <laughs> coordinator, and Cashman, who was also on the Texans. So they made, they upgraded their defense. They just don't have a quarterback. That's all. Um, the Packers made big moves with McKinney, who I was my target for the Bears. That's who I wanted them to go after. Um, I just didn't know what the money would be for that. And then Jacobs, they go out and get Josh Jacobs from the, the Raiders. I thought those were two excellent moves. And the one thing that the Packers do very well, as we all know, is they draft very well. So yes. they were just going they, – they they let a couple of players go. And I think that was a small part of their plan because they are going to go identify certain players in the draft, and they draft well. And there's, there's no reason for me not to believe that they're not going to. And then the Lions um, made an under-the-radar trade – before we jump down here today, guys, is they got Carlton yeah. Davis from the Buccaneers. Mm-hmm. Carlton Davis had a little bit of a down year last year, but he's a very good – I still think he's a very good player. And I thought Detroit – to me, Detroit, I thought they were lacking some of their secondary. I, I think if, if their secondary would have played a little bit better down the stretch last year, I, I, I think they needed – that. And you could tell that's what they're going after in the draft when I was yes. reading the combine reports about the Lions. They were looking at cornerbacks. They were looking at safeties. Like they were – they're, they're really looking to build that secondary. So I think Davis was a very good pickup for them. So as you guys look at the landscape around the uh, uh, NFC North, what stood out to you? Um, I did, To me, what stood out to me is that the Lions were – everyone thought that kind of this was the Lions only. You heard Dan Campbell say it too. Like, this might have been our only shot, guys. 
um, with the team that they had because they didn't really think that most of the people that they were all going to be on free agency weren't going to come back. But, I mean, they re-signed pretty much every guy that was supposed to go to free agency. They pretty much re-signed them all, except for uh, except for Tracy Walker, who they let go. Um, that trade for Carlton Davis underrated as hell, and they snuck by, and everybody was like, what, who the hell, what, when did this even happen? No one even knew what happened. Right, and then signing Marcus Davenport to a That's another one. Yep. six point five million dollar deal, which everybody thought he would, you know, grab more money than that, you know. So I don't know how Detroit talked him into that, but they sure as hell did. So I think that was to me that those are two most underrated things. And obviously, Josh Jacobs, I kind of figured if he wasn't going to go to us, he would either go to the Packers or we might actually see him go to the Buffalo Bills or the Ravens. Um, so. To me, it wasn't really a surprise. It was, I was kind of expecting him to go to one of those three teams. That they lost A.J. Dillon, Ravens lost Gus Edward, and the Bills also looking for a second a, – a, a, another a second um, uh, rotational running back. So those were the three teams I saw him going to. So I am actually generally not shocked by that, but I am shocked at the amount of money they gave him. So, I mean, I guess that's something to be surprised by. Yeah, I think it was – the aggressiveness of the Packers. I I was one that didn't expect Jacobs to go there. That's not really a destination I had in mind because I thought they were just going to keep Jones around. I didn't think he'd had a bad year last year. Thought he was pretty good, especially in that committee with him and A.J. Dillon. has been a solid one-two punch for a couple of years now. Didn't expect that one at all. And then for him to get released, I honestly thought Jones would have been picked up by now because I think he's still got a lot of value. I thought Dallas would have swooped in taking him almost instantly the second they saw he was released. Seems like a perfect fit, especially even with the Mike McCarthy connection back with him in Green Bay. Thought that would have been a really good fit for them. And then, yeah, I mean, the big one's McKinney. That was the big splash. I mean, I think he's getting 17 mil, so he's like third or fourth highest safety now by average salary per year. It's a pretty rich contract, but that Green Bay secondary, that was one of their weaknesses in that defense and – He's very young. He's going to be around for a while and should stay productive, which really stinks for the Bears. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think the Packers are finished quite yet either. I. I think they'll still build on that secondary in the draft. There's a lot of mock drafts having uh, Cooper DeJean go there, um, but I also, you know, they always run the spell. They lost Aaron. They released Aaron Jones, but I think they're also going to lose AJ Dillon. So I see them still either drafting a late round running back. I saw some rumors with. Zach Moss possibly ending up on the Packers. I don't think they'll have enough after the season he had. I don't think they'll have enough money to pay him and Brandon Jacobs. But I don't think the Packers are finished. And unfortunately, they're also a team that drafts really well on top of having a good day in free agency today. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to keep in mind too with our division when we talk about the Packers and the Lions. You got to—I I said the Packers about how they draft very well. The, the Lions draft very well too. Yeah. And th- these are two teams that. I, there, there, there's no reason for me not to believe that if they lose some of their key players or let some of their key players go, they're going to go right into this draft. Brad Holmes and Gutenkutz are going to go right into this draft and pick out the players that they need, those impact players, and and plug them in. So that's why the Bears are going to do everything they can <clears throat> and build this team up and try to stay as competitive because I don't see the Lions and Packers going anywhere anytime soon. No. Um, and I don't even know who's playing quarterback for Minnesota. So I, I have no idea what, even what to expect from them next year. Jefferson cannot be a very happy guy right now, unless they unless they go and make a splash somewhere. I mean, he's going into his last year. I was like, I don't know, man. If Justin Fields, yeah, if if, if they had Justin Fields, yeah. I guess ain't be- nobody in Minnesota want to see him play. So it's all uh, good. Yeah, right. <laughs> don't see yeah. him playing up. He ain't selling jerseys out there. Um, um, yeah, I mean, but I mean, there. I mean, there is there is some definitely the Packers and and Lions. There's some definitely some good free agency. I think you're going to see the Packers. Packers trade around the draft a little bit, kind of flex flex their muscle a little bit in the in the draft, um, and acquire what we're trying to do and get hauls and trying multiple picks because the the Packer the Packers are really young and I think they they're looking to kind of stay that way um, throughout the years. Now the younger guys are even more are are getting older every year, so they're going to keep trying to bring in more and more guys if they can. Um, the Lions, I see the Lions, the Lions, the Lions are trying to win right now. So, I mean, there's some guys, the Bills, having the Bills, Bills released 90% of their damn starting defense to everybody. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think you might see the the Lions start to try and they, they might draft, but they might actually go into free agency more than go draft wise with so many player players on the board. I think they're just waiting to 
waiting for it to die down, ramp up, and see if they can maybe sneak in a secret deal with somewhere. I mean, don't don't count out the fact that Daniel Hunter might not end up end up as being a freaking lion, and that about be the best defensive line in the damn league at that point. So, um, I think the lion the lions could definitely make a splash in free agency here real soon. God, you know, as we take a look around the league today, guys, um, lots of moves around the league. We talked about Barkley; uh, he ends in Philadelphia. I think that's a great. I think that's a great landing spot for him. Uh, Brian Burns of the Panthers gets traded, goes to to the Giants. They they get a couple of draft picks in return. I think if a team, if you're a team like the Panthers, you just blowing everything up right now, and just had that from disaster last year, and you just do whatever you can to get some draft picks. Uh, I think a second round, you know, Brian Burns as good of a player he is, a second round draft pick these days. If you find the right player, they can be very impactful. Just ask the Steelers about that trade with the Bears, and they get Joey Porter Jr., who turned out to be one hell of a cornerback. So if you even any type of second-round pick, it still can be impactful. I think that probably could have been a good move for the, for the Panthers because they're not going anywhere next year. Yeah. So go ahead and trade him away and get some draft picks in return, and you just start building up now with your new coaching staff. So I thought that was, uh, that was eye-opening. Uh, Michael, to kind of what you said a little bit earlier, um, about Wilkins going to the Raiders. I thought that was a lot of money. Now, I think that's going to be one hell of a defensive line now between him and, and Crosby. I, oh, I, wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't want to be an offensive line going up against those guys, man. That's that's going to be foursome right there. Um, and just to see where the running backs have, have gone and and uh, what, what around the league stood out to you guys today? I mean, I think the Burns is probably the biggest one for me. Yeah. I think for me, it's the lack of receivers getting signed. It was it, only Gabe Davis has come off the board. You still have Calvin Ridley, Curtis Samuel, Tyler Boyd. They're all still out there. Haven't seen too much movement in the wide receivers. <laughs> I thought maybe those guys would come off. Maybe once I thought maybe it'd be like a one domino fall, see where the value is, and then the rest will slowly start to trickle out. But I mean, it's 845 and there's only been one of those main receivers to get signed so far. And that was Gabe Davis to Jacksonville. So that kind of surprised me a little bit, especially since that's a market I consider the Bears would be pretty active in to try and get one of those guys. Um, yeah, so I'm, I agree with that. I think I thought the wide receiver market would go real fast. I mean, I think obviously everybody expected Mike Evans not to not to go back to Tampa Bay, and he did. That kind of screwed the Bears' his probably hopes right there. And then they're like, okay, we're gonna go get Michael Pittman. Well, that screwed the Bears' hope right there because they didn't they, they re-signed him too. I mean, but you're talking about Odell Beckham, Tyler Boyd, Curtis Samuel, Michael Thomas, who just got released by the uh Saints. Saw that uh, I mean Westbrook, uh Noah Brown. Marquise Vabis Scantling, like there's so many, but I also think the way the wide receivers performed in the draft is what's kind of keeping teams away. We saw how the wide receivers performed in the um in the combine. It was pretty damn amazing what we saw from these wide receivers. They said oh, this is gonna be a really good wide receiver class, especially later in the draft. And I think a lot of people are maybe hoping, hey, maybe we can get one of these one of these really good receivers late in the draft. So why go for receiver and we can build everything else around right now? Um, I still think that I agree with Michael. I think the Bears should be going after Calvin Ridley or Tyler Boyd or even Michael Thomas or KJ Osborne. Guys like those are big targets, you know, things like that. Especially if we're going to get a rookie quarterback, you want to have a you want to have a, as many veteran receivers as you can um, around around such a young guy. I think a couple of things that surprised me were some of the just the signings I saw. Justin Jones with the Cardinals uh, and Kendrick Bourne with the Patriots. I think. I mean, obviously, it's a demanding market, but I mean, think both guys were pretty overpaid <clears throat> after I saw that contract. But it didn't upset me that the Bears weren't able to re-sign Justin Jones. But also, the Niners, who were one game away from winning the Super Bowl, just released Armstead, and they signed Leonard Floyd. I, I think they did have a lot of interest in Christian Wilkins. It looked like they were trying to make a run at him. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know that I could say their off defensive line improved, and I think that they're in a position where it's – all or nothing. How about the former Bears getting signed today? You said Justin Jones. How about Bilal Nichols also going to the Cardinals? Yeah, get, get, getting getting a big deal with them. Now he had a great he had he played great for the Raiders last year. So I'm glad that he got that contract. 
but a, a couple of former bears going to the Cardinals, man, making some money. So that's pretty cool to see that. And that, or I don't know if it's cool to see that, or it's just like, damn, man, that what, what, what if, what if, what if they could have, what if yeah. a guy like Nichols could have stayed with us, man. And, <laughs> and see, I see, think you'll see Eddie Jackson sign soon too. Yeah. Eddie, yeah. He, the, these guys are going to eventually sign here. So yeah, you, we're going to see a lot of these guys get signed. I think a lot of people are just kind of waiting for the big names to go off the board and then combine that with what's left with what's, with what's going on in the draft draft world before the trade for draft picks start getting traded within the first 10 minutes of the draft starts and everybody's trading up and trading down and left and right and all that stuff. So I think, I mean, a guy like Pat, I got, I got like Patrick queen. He's going to, he's, he's probably going to go tomorrow. Let's be real. I mean, he'd be there tomorrow or the next day. Um, a guy like, I mean, Devin white, Bobby Wagner, um, you know, Marquise Golden, these are all guys that, you know, are older players, but they can Jadavi and Klein, they can help your team. So you're we're gonna see a lot of these guys go sooner than later. I just everybody's kind of like I think everyone's standoff because they don't want to see what everybody else is willing to pay first before they counter offer and stuff like that. So and it'll be interesting with the draft too on some of these positions, like kind of like what you guys said with the receivers. This is a very deep draft, and um a lot of teams probably gonna be maybe not not spending as much money and going more towards the draft route, which that's what I I love that part of this that you just don't know what to expect. And it'll be fun to see. And we'll be talking about that on Wednesday, guys. Uh, make sure you watch us. We got a couple minutes left here on the Monsters of the Madhouse Chicago Sports Podcast. Thanks to everybody in the chat tonight. We see y'all, Casey and Dan, Eric. Thank you guys all so much um, for, for watching. Uh, you guys watching on YouTube, like and subscribe on our YouTube page on the Monsters of the Madhouse Chicago Sports Podcast Facebook page. We have articles going up all the time. Our guy, Cleet Campbell, always putting up some great articles. Brandon Tracks High, it's a guy running the show here for Chicago Sports Podcast. So thank you guys very much. Uh, a couple minutes left. Just want to get your guys' uh, thoughts here really quickly about the stadium, about the Bears, uh, the stadium. We got the news earlier today. Looks like they're <coughs> going to be staying in Chicago. Kevin Warren putting out the statement. Uh, $2 billion to, uh, I, I guess, somewhere in the South Loop. It looks like somewhere in the South Loop, which I think is going to be very interesting with the South Lot. Um, <laughs> depending where they would go because now you got the white Sox also trying to go into the South loop. I don't, I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but this one definitely sees more feasible. And I, I love every aspect of this because I think it's time. Uh, I, I was all for Arlington Heights. I'm all for something new now. I think you got to kind of get into this world and to this generation now uh, of other things that you could possibly host when you're putting in a new stadium, not only just a new stadium, but everything that you would put around it. Um, but you're going to have other like concerts and NCAA tournaments and all that type of stuff coming into the city, generating more revenue and more revenue for that area. So I think this is something that I, that needs to get done and I hope it gets done. Yeah. I think probably the thing that stood out, I mean, I, it's great thing. I mean, I think everyone knows that soldier fields probably at the, bottom of the barrel when you're looking at nfl stadiums i mean they're on the same tier as metlife which is a dump basically oh, i put them cool. in the same tier yeah especially the turf every player loves that place to play in but when i think the thing that stood out to me was that it's two billion for a public stadium so they're not yeah. even gonna own it so that's kind of the detail that i kind of found confusing i feel like if you're gonna build this kind of state-of-the-art entertainment district let's face it it's not a football stadium it's really an entertainment district that they're going to be building i feel like you'd want to own that privately and not it be public owned like what soldier field is now because i thought that's what kevin warren was kind of brought in to do it was kind of build the bears owned stadium not just the like chicago owned stadium i thought they were trying to get away from that so that confused me a little bit oh my th I I, I'm, I, for some reason, I'm still not sold on, on the, the Lakeside Stadium. I, I know that's Kevin. Uh-oh. Nope. Frozen. Uh-oh. 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 <laughs> he's getting passionate about the Lakeside, guys. And look what happens. <laughs> no, you know, I mean, everybody thinks that Lakeside property is um is, is a great thing. And it can't, it, I mean, it can be. I mean, we see the Boston Red Sox, you know how how that works. I mean, everyone freaking loves the crap out of it, you know. Everybody talks about how great it is. No better stadium at stadium Lakeside Front Stadium. We see the the what the Golden State Warriors just built, their lakeside, their their lakeside, their ocean side, actually. So, you know, I mean, I, I think it could be a good thing. I'm I'm not particularly sold on it. I'm happy that we're staying in Chicago though. I think that that is the big thing. I did the thoughts of leaving and getting further away was just going to be a disaster. Um, I am happy that we are staying in Chicago though. You know, what's interesting too, guys is uh, my, my girlfriend and I, we're both diehard. She's a diehard Steeler fan. I'm the diehard bear fan. We've gone to 14 different stadiums in the NFL. The best stadium that both of us have on our list. Number one is Minneapolis, Minnesota, us bank stadium. That is the best that is the best stadium, the best experience that 
either one of us have ever had at a football game. And we ball and we, to all the stadiums that we've been to, we've been to a lot of good ones. There's a lot of good ones around the league, but that place is unbelievable. And if, 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 and that's where Kevin Warren comes from, he comes from that tree. And if they could get something like that or get something together like that, I'm telling you guys, man, this is, I think there's just nothing but a win-win and it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. It've got lots of time to play or a lot of time to play out. Um, but you know, there's going to be a lot going back and forth here over a <coughs> couple of months. Heck, probably over the next year. So uh, we'll, we'll yeah. find out what happens. So uh, thank you guys for watching tonight. Um, thank you for watching on YouTube, Facebook, on Twitter. I uh, want to also thank some of our awesome sponsors like TC's World of Wonders. Guys, you got to get your jerseys, man. Baseball season's only a couple of weeks away. I don't have my new Sox jersey yet. I don't know who to get because I don't know who's <laughs> going to get traded. So I don't, I don't know what's going right? to What's yeah. to, do I get Luis Robert or what, what do I do? So I got to call my friends at TC's World of Wonders, man. And uh, talk to them, and they're going to put me in the right direction. They're going to put you in the right direction, too. Check them out at tcsworldofwonders.com. Budget Cars, that is in Chicagoland, Northwest Indiana. Since They've been there since 1972. You can call them at 219-873-3988. And Serendipity Ice Cream Parlor, they've been with us for a very long time. You can check them out in Griffith. As Bridges Scoreboard, uh, Bridges Scoreboard, Northwest Indiana Sports Headquarters, which has got a delicious menu of food. I've been there multiple times. Trax is there all the time. If you go back and watch some of our shows, they're an awesome sponsor of us. So you can check them out. Go there, watch the game. And the Stadium Club in Worth, which is another very cool place. We appreciate you guys watching tonight. Our next show is going to be back on Wednesday night. Uh, normally, I am the one on Wednesday nights. I will be out this week. So Dano, my good buddy Dano, who I've known forever, will be back. Uh, back with the crew talking more about Bears free agency because I don't know, guys. I feel like there's going to be more stuff happening here in the next two days. I think there's going to be a lot of stuff happening here in the next two days yep. to, to, to kind of get caught up at everything. So if you guys just follow along with our pages, uh, we'll keep you up to date as well on our Facebook page, Monsters of the Madhouse, the Chicago Sports Podcast on Facebook, and we'll, we'll let you know what's going on uh, as far as free agency and everything in uh, Chicago sports. To everybody watching tonight, Cheryl, Eric, Pinky, we love you all, man. Appreciate you guys watching. Cheryl always giving us updates of the scores. Um, and to you guys, Michael, first off, it's good to see you, man. Good to have you back. Yeah, good. Always exciting. I was kind of hoping that maybe something would happen while we were here. Give us something like live to talk about. That would have been pretty cool. But I think all we got is Biggs keeps alluding to Daniel Hunter. So, I mean, it's something that I don't expect, but it, it sounds like it's still a possibility. So we'll just have to see. I know. I was going to go to my breaking news sound, man. I guess I, I can't do that. until next <laughs> time. Uh, I, The only thing I saw, yeah, like I said, the only thing I saw was Diana CB saying that Aaron Jones could be a good landing fit for the Vikings. And I don't know if that's breaking news or not, but um, – but either way, we'll, we'll get you on there. Eric, Eric, man, it's good to have you on, man. First time with you tonight, man. It's been so much fun. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope, hope to be on many more times, man. Thank you for having me on. Um, hopefully we get a little more exciting news next time <laughs> Next time we're on and not be disappointed <laughs> by all the things that didn't happen for the Bears. But, uh, no, well, let's, uh, let's hope for good things in the future. You know what's going to happen, guys? I'm going to hit this end here as we get ready to end the show. And like two seconds, like two minutes later, there's going to be like some guy that's going to be signing with the Bears. And then we're going to be like, oh, <laughs> come on. What the hell? Why? Why? <laughs> Keenan, well, the, the Chargers just announced they're, ta they're, they're taking tra all trade calls for Keenan Allen. So okay, <laughs> hopefully that's that, that's a like button for somebody. Yeah, yeah. The, the Chargers who's trying to dump everybody, right? Yeah. <laughs> they're trying to dump whoever. Yeah. Whoever's hopefully making more than five million dollars, right? <laughs> hopefully they dump us for Joey Bosa too. They can dump him over here too. Yeah, get, get us one of those guys. That would be cool. <laughs> I feel like any guy that's making over $5 million on the Chargers could be on the trade bar. Trade bar exactly. so. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys for watching tonight. Thank you guys for being part of the show. And uh, we'll talk to you again on Wednesday. So you guys have a great rest of your night. And we'll